Hi, I'm J.D. Jeffrey, museum curator at the Windermere Valley Museum, and this is a Columbia Valley history short. In the times with the pioneers, uh, transportation was a challenge in the area, and one of the solutions they had was building steamboats. Uh, the steamboats ran um, from Golden down to Windermere. Uh, some of them um, actually ventured as far as Canal Flats and into the Kootenai River. The very first steamboat was built in 1883 and we had a gentleman who wanted to get his potato crop out to Banff so he actually created a steamboat to run from his place by Fairmont and uh, shimp them up to Golden to be transported by rail over to the Banff area. And the first boat that he built was actually called the Duchess One. It was made out of simple boards, really harsh looking. It was definitely not appealing to the eyes. Um, it was just enough to transport what he wanted. It never carried people, just his crops. Over time, uh, people realized that they could ship their freight from Golden, where the, was a stop from the CPR, uh, to get their supplies brought down. And uh, so the people started getting really creative and building their own boats. A couple of them over time were eventually robbed. So the Duchess One was eventually the steamboat engine in it was used in the Duchess Two. So he, when uh, the captain wanted to upgrade, he built another boat and he robbed his materials from the previous, previous boats to, uh, to make it a little easier. Um, at the most time, we had probably about three boats at any given time pulling. Um, and uh, the, the boats themselves um, did many different things. The only downfall is a lot of the boats were only about two feet in the water. So when the supplies got put on the boats and they started to haul the freight, they were quite top heavy. And a few stories uh, date back to the RCMP when uh, Sam Steele was trying to get his supplies down to Fort Steele. He had contracted a couple of steamboats over time. The first one, uh, they loaded it up, brought it down, gets down partway down the river and it topples over too much weight. And all the supplies that they had, including the uniforms, all went into the river and washed down, down river. So this was not too happy, made, made Sam Steele too happy. So he turned around and contracted a different boat so that he could get his supplies and try again. And unfortunately, the same thing happened to the next steamboat where it toppled over and the wheat, the uniforms and everything were lost in the, the toppling. Um, a lot of the boats though, because they were fairly shallow, were um, rescued. They actually were able to use them often and repeatedly. Traveling on average, you, if you did find the boats we're using, you could travel from Golden down to Windermere, which is where the last community was for, um, for supplies. Uh, if you actually ventured further south, there was a, a tramway that had to be used between Fairmont and Canal Flats, which hooked up to the Columbia Lake. And there was rapids there as well as a little little lake, but to, to send a boat further south was actually more of a challenge. We did have actually two that did venture south. One was called the Gwendolyn, and then another one was the North Star. Um, to get them to where they were going, which actually these two were coming from the Kootenai River to the Columbia, they actually had to go through a set of locks, which were built sometime before at Canal Flats. And both boats unfortunately were too big for the canal so they actually had to blow them up to accommodate the size of the boats. Uh, the first one with Gwendolyn was actually repaired by the province but when the North Star came through they, the province says no it's not worth it so they decided to leave the canals where they were and you can still go visit those today. The rest of the boats though stuck really close to the Columbia River um, and those ones only could travel in the river from about April to October. Um, April after high water had come through um, because the water was too fast running and then October it, the water would freeze over so they couldn't travel during that time. But after the high water was done they always had to dredge the river to get rid of any deadheads or any of the sandbars. The fun part about being on a river boat or a steamboat was 
if you got stuck, you were expected to be like a crew. You had to either get out and push if you're stuck on a sandbar, or being the fuel source, which was wood, you'd have to stop along the, the road, or in this case, the river, and pile on the wood that was usually left by the river uh, for the steamboats to use as a fuel. So you were expected to work just as much, even if you were just someone who's traveling down the river to vacation, we'll say. In about 1920, the last boat um, actually traveled on the river, um, and it was the Nowitka. What happened at that time is the railway had come through, and in the 1920s it was planned for the road to come through, and the road actually killed the use of the steamboats because there was no need for anyone to use them for transportation. So uh, what ended up happening is Nowitka headed towards Golden, and they had to do pilings for a bridge that was to be built in Briscoe. So when the Nowitka went past Briscoe, put the pilings in, it continued on, and it was the end of the era of the steamboats. I'm J.D. Jeffrey, and this has been a Columbia Valley History Short.